This week's very short conclusion in Henry Nouwen's Spiritual Direction reminded me again of the importance of surrender and submission to my catcher, God the Father, Christ, Holy Spirit. The secret that the flyer does nothing and the catcher does everything resonates with me. At times in my spiritual journey where God has asked me to take a huge risk, for example, move my family to Russia, adopt children, launch into formal ministry, I have sat with the image of diving off of a high diving board through a cloud into an unseen yet to be filled pool far below and it has brought me great comfort knowing that God is always faithful, always loving, always present, always generous. The flyer catcher image is so much more embodied and intimate and I am thankful for this beautiful parable. It's a great reminder to really believe that the worst thing the flyer can do is try to catch the catcher. Lord, help me to surrender moment by moment, breath by breath. I want to trust you more. I am so fascinated by Henry's thoughts on the discipline of the body, adding to the three main disciplines of the spiritual life he described, the heart, the book, and the church. For consistency, I would want it to be written as the capital B body, but I can see how that could cause some confusion, as readers might think that referred to the body of Christ and not our actual flesh and bones. I've had enough body-related experiences over the years that have awakened me to the realization that my view of the body and even my body are in need of an expanded, sanctified vision. Undoubtedly, I have been influenced greatly by the multiple primary cultures in which I was raised, including nations, circles of communities, the church, and my family. This is the exact area in which I hope to learn the most during my time in seminary, though I have no doubt that God, being perfect in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, will surprise me by teaching me all kinds of things in every area of life and study. But I long to grow in love and understanding about the spirituality of the body, the enfleshed life, and how to be a conduit of love, grace, and truth among people whom the church in the time and place in which God has put me has excluded or not welcomed. I do have some of those same questions that Henry shares. I'm chewing on this one the most today. What is my responsibility to the world around me? And what is my responsibility to myself? For most of my life, I've focused on the first part of that question. I'm hearing an invitation from God to ask the second part more often of myself and to encourage others around me to engage with this balanced pair of questions as they seek to follow Jesus by loving God and people. I'm also pondering what it would look like to, as now and put it, bring my body home. I'd love to hear others' thoughts on this, too. I shared early in this course that I was moved to seek another spiritual director. I prayerfully did just that, and in a very short time, God provided someone. I had my first appointment a couple of weeks ago, and one immediate and very personal confirmation was that in his opening introduction of who he was, he shared his wife's given and middle names, the same exact combination as my beloved mother, who passed away 32 years ago, and one that I had not encountered in another. All that to say, I wholeheartedly agree with Henry's closing paragraph in Appendix 2, Trust that God will lead you. After all, it is God's Spirit that does the guiding and real directing. The director is simply there to be God's friend and yours in the process. May we each live the questions deeply, knowing that you and I are God's beloved. <laughs>